Hi. Hi. My name is Henry Goldblatt. I'm the editor of Entertainment Weekly magazine. As editor of Entertainment Weekly, I know I'm not supposed to play favorites, but sometimes it's really, really difficult not to. And I'm just thrilled to be here um, to moderate a panel of my favorite TV show um, currently on the air, Scandal. And without further ado, I'd really like to bring out the cast. Uh, first, Joshua Molina. Uh, next up, we've got Guillermo Diaz. Katie Lowe's. The glamorous we Scott Foley. I don't know. Yay! The even more glamorous Kerry Washington. Hey! Next up is Tony Goldwyn. And our favorite first lady, Bellamy Young. Yeah! Woo! We've got Jeff Perry up next. Woo! Darby Stanchfield. Darby! Darby! And last but not least, Portia de Rossi. Hey everyone. Hi. Hello. Hey. How come some of us were fabulous, more fabulous? I know. I was some of us that. just the name. Some of them were just the name. It's because I got I like, nothing. Because I like some of you better than others. That's basically what it is. Thank you for your candor. No, you know, it is what it is. Say Josh's name again. <laughs> Josh Mina. Mina. Gorgeous. Yeah. 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 It's too little too late. <laughs> You're going to be like this all night, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> um, Carrie, I want to start with you. Oh. Ooh. Uh -oh. I need to, you to finally answer the question that is on all of our minds. Do you actually like popcorn and red wine in real life? <laughs> or are you such a good actress that you are faking it the entire time? Um, I actually, the first time that I saw that Olivia Pope was alone at home drinking wine and eating popcorn, I thought maybe Shonda had hidden cameras in my house <laughs> because I do love popcorn. Excellent. I love popcorn. But I drink, I don't know, like two to four times a year. So I'm not a huge drinker. But heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get We're talking a lot. Fall back out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fall down. I travel or special occasions, so I'm not a huge wine drinker. But the grape juice that I drink on the show is... I was going to ask, what is it? It's grape juice? Yeah. Um, what kind of grape juice? Any idea? Uh, organic Welch's. Oh, nice. Yeah. You get the mustache after you drink it, too, sometimes? Yeah, but, you know, I did, the first time I did like, a wine drinking scene with Darby, we were sitting in my apartment drinking, and I learned a phrase I'd never heard before. She said, oh, the grape juice has so much sugar in it, I have those little sweaters on my teeth. And I was like, what are you talking about? And it's that fuzzy thing that happens to your teeth when you eat a lot of sugar. They get little never sweaters on them, and I love that. So it wasn't like a V-neck or like a crew neck. It was actually like a fuzzy thing. I'm Olivia Pope, so angle. <laughs> obviously, obviously. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little more seriously for a second, Carrie. Um, there, um, the scenes that you filmed, particularly the kidnapping scenes um, earlier this season, were some of the most harrowing, both on Scandal and on television as a whole, I think. And what was it? Can you talk to us a little bit of what it was like to film those? It was, and I actually I couldn't find the word when we were doing it, and Scott actually said this word to me um, because he appeared in the dream sequence moment. So we had this one scene together and um, he gave me a language for it, which was that it felt very lonely um, because... I'm just used to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you talked about being on other shows and shooting episodes that are really different from how you usually do them. And I felt like I, I didn't have my family. I didn't have my usual Olivia Pope wardrobe, which is like my armor when it comes to playing her. Um, I didn't have my usual Olivia Pope hair, which is my helmet when it comes to playing her. Um, I didn't, I, I, none of the actors I was working with were these guys. None of the locations were locations that I knew. Um, so it felt 
thrilling because I was discovering who is Olivia Pope without all these things that I've learned to attach to to define her. Um, but I missed these guys. A lot. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things we all love about Scandal is the way that it doesn't shy away from topical issues. And this year we saw an episode called The Lawn Chair, mm -hmm. which, was, um, mm -hmm. which was inspired by events in Ferguson. Uh, yes, it deserves a round of applause. Um, talk to us a little bit about what that was like to film and be on set for. Um, it was crazy. I mean, I've been thinking about <clears throat> one night where, uh, when Katie and Guillermo, when we were all out there, it just was, we always rely on our background actors because, you know, our background actors make the world real. It, you, it looks like the White House because there are 30 people who come in every day and walk back and forth behind us while we're acting to make it look like the White House. So, you know, we, we are very grateful for our background actors, but that episode in particular, these guys were out there every night, all night, doing this, re having this, these really emotional reactions to what was happening, and uh, it felt really special and different. Um, it feels even difficult to describe it, quite honestly, because we knew we were doing something really poignant um, and a little bit scary. Like I remember our, our director for that episode was the brilliant Tom Verica, and he's like a Philly guy. He's a guy, like a guy's guy from Philly. And I, I turned to, to Tom and I said, how many cousins do you have that are cops? <laughs> are you scared about people's reactions? You know, and-, and This whole family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so to, to be tasked with going into the scary places <clears throat> is one of the gifts of working in Shondaland. Um, before I let, let you off the hot seat, um, tell me your biggest OMG moment of the season. <laughs> um, it's in the finale. Ah, <laughs> we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, Tony, same question for you. What was your biggest OMG moment of the season? Same answer. Oh, God. <laughs> Can we, just screen the, can we just screen the finale now? <laughs> yeah, right? Um, yeah. You mentioned Tom being a terrific director, but Tony, um, you are a terrific director He's as well. Okay. And um, I was going to say, which of, these, which of these people is the worst for you to direct? <laughs> which of them is the worst? Yeah, the most difficult. They're, they're, they're all yeah. horrible, right? <laughs> um, what's when I get carry direction, I say, you know, maybe you should try this. She said, yeah, I thought of that, but no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it the way that I do. What's been your favorite episode to direct of the series? Mm. Oh, they've all been so much fun. Um, I can't pick the, the you know the I guess have I done two or three? It's always just a blast. I, I can't I can't pick one particular. That's uh, that's terrific. No, no, that's not true. I'll oh, you can't pinpoint something. Yeah, the one uh, when. Um, when when we yeah in the second season when we got back together and Melly was alone and and Jeff was running through the tunnel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the clock was going. Uh, was going the clock right. was I'm gonna going stay here. Whole I'm gonna time. stay here and watch the clock. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. And I had to direct the love scene between Carrie and me. Which <laughs> yeah, how, do, an how do you do that? <laughs> <Look at her. laughs> I was like cut. <laughs> 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 And I'm like, keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs> We're gonna go again. <laughs> Tony, Deal with it. <laughs> Tony, you have one of the best fan interaction stories I've ever heard in my life, and I believe it involves a tongue, and I'd really like to hear it again. <laughs> me too. Oh, me too. So, um, I was in Toronto, <laughs> scouting locations for the series that I produced last year, The Divide. Which was we were, amazing. <clears throat> amazing. Thanks. Yes. Um, and um, we were, I was also I was on the street and I was distracted and I was with a couple of people. <laughs> and a woman came up and she said, oh, God, I love Scandal. Can I take a picture with you? I said, sure. <clears throat> and um, she, so she stood next to me and the person I was with took the camera. And as they were taking the picture, she moves in to kiss me like <laughs> full on. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> and so I kind of turned my mouth away from her and she licked my neck. <laughs> and then and I was like, did that just happen? <laughs> and then she took her camera and she said, thanks, love the show, bye! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! Um, so just, as a, just as a public service announcement, there will be no licking of the cows yeah. tonight. Oh. And that, it was a lick. Like you saw Guillermo and Kate. Well, I was just about to say, hey, Guillermo. <laughs> Speaking of tongues. Speaking of licking. Exactly. Take me through your life for a moment. Um, you wake up in the morning and you think, 
I've got to pretend to pull out someone's teeth today. Like, how do you even begin to prepare for something? <laughs> I, I, I was really excited to shoot that episode. <laughs> yeah. We shot that on Halloween night. And Which is Guillermo's favorite Halloween. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> and it's with Katie Lowe's. She's like my bud, you know? So we just, we had a blast. I mean, she had the, the worst of it because she had to be sort of taped down, right, with electrical tape. Like for the whole, the I had whole like a duct episode. Tape bra. Yeah. <laughs> we had such a good time, though. It was so good. <laughs> For you anyway. I was like, sit still. <laughs> uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of killing, um, tell us what it was like um, to kill Lena Dunham. Oh, that is on screen. It was so much fun. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, she's, uh, originally it was a different character on the show that killed her. And then we got new pages, we got uh, rewrites, and, and you know, we find out that it's Huck that actually uh, slits her throat. I was extremely excited, and so was Lena. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, I'm so excited I get to be killed by Huck. And what, uh, what face did she make? Yeah. She did this when I slit her throat. <laughs> Remember? She kept crossing her eyes and sticking her tongue out. <laughs> so sweet. Maybe we'll see the same outtake on Girls this coming season. That would be amazing. I was hoping for a crossover episode. I would oh, love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Um, you have the best. Oh, yeah. um, you have the best post-show decompression ritual ever. Um, tell us about that. What do I do? I believe it involves <laughs> movies. Oh yeah. I mean, I love horror movies, so I'll watch. Yeah, I'll watch horror movies. And but, but what's what's even funnier is I, I have a, the full on the full season of I Love Lucy in my trailer. So <laughs> I constantly am watching I Love Lucy episodes in my trailer, along with like Rosemary's Baby and. <laughs> <laughs> Other horrific. So you slip the writer some ideas. Like I think I can kill someone yeah. this way next time. There was one episode that described Huck um, looking like Carrie from the movie in this one episode, where he kills a room full of men, and I was just. Like, I remember Katie looking at me and saying, "You love this, don't you?" And I was like, yeah. um, "Katie, can you smile for us? Like full smile." Why are you saying because I smile a lot? No, I'm thrilled that you smile a lot, but I'm worried that you don't have all your teeth, and I just oh. want to make sure. That you smile. Yeah, that's like a big thing in my life between family members and strangers that come up to me on the street are constantly checking the smile. <laughs> like they're, they're, health they're of my all teeth there all the time. Great. Yeah, people come up to me in the middle, like your stories with licking. Mine are usually people are like, let me see in your mouth. You have all your molars? Because that's I'm not invasive like, at all. Everything's good. I love my dentist. <laughs> that's not invasive at all. <laughs> um, Quinn has probably been through the biggest character evolution throughout the series, and I'm wondering how you approach her differently today than you did in the early seasons. Um, it's, it's actually much uh, more difficult for me now. I think that probably in life I'm far more similar to Quinn season one, two, and so I find myself, I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm so thrilled that I, Shonda, I, I, to have a character that gets to be one way and then you see a completely different mm -hmm. side of her. Um, but yeah, I find myself constantly being like, okay, you gotta like walk with swag. You gotta like yeah. be really confident. You gotta like be a so badass, well you know? <laughs> because I'm more of a, uh, they'll tell you. I mean, I like run around quickly and I, you know. <laughs> pajama, you really, really run around. I wear pajamas, I'm really smiley, I'm not really badass, kind of, <laughs> but it, it's really fun to do that. Hello. Hi. Hello. Pass that phone up right now. Let's <laughs> <laughs> answer it. Oh. I'm going to ask this of a few of you, and I'm very, very curious. What are your work dreams like? Like, like you know, I'm, a, I'm an editor of a magazine. I may have a dream that the magazine's not going to get up on time or something like that. That's what my stress work dreams are like. What are yours like? Like, oh, I'm going to have my molars pulled out tomorrow, and that's going to be a little difficult. I think my fear dreams about this job are usually just about lines. So, <laughs> really right. Because, really? you know, we do these huge scripts with a lot of pages and a lot of dialogue and we have to be word perfect and you have to speak really fast and you're up against the clock. So usually the night before I shoot, I'm just like sleeping in a weird state, waking up kind of sort of and then drilling lines more. I have I'm regular, sure you don't have regular actor dreams, like fear like what? Tell us. Yeah, like what, Tony? Yeah. I have regular, really weird, uh, con recurring dream <laughs> that I'm naked. Oh God! Come on. That, <laughs> <laughs> that I'm generally naked on yeah. stage in front of an audience, like this, for example. Just. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just like this. <laughs> that would sell tickets. And I'll I don't know <laughs> what play I'm in, and everybody else on stage knows what play oh, it is. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, and I'm uh, wondering, like, do they know I'm? Do they notice that I'm naked? Is that weird? <laughs> um, weird. And what play is this? I'll I'll have to think of something when someone turns to me like I'm supposed to be talking, and I'll just figure it out. And it's quite stressful. And it, the other one that I have is being on set, like. Katie said, like, suddenly I'm at Scandal, and uh, I don't have any idea what scene I'm in. Like, I'm there, and everybody's ready, and, and I'm like, well, wait, I didn't, what, 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 what that actually happened. <laughs> what am except, I talking about? Didn't that happen the other day? It happens to me all the time, except mine from this show is that I can't find sides anywhere. <laughs> Nobody has any sides. Oh, right. <laughs> and That's the real situation. We have to <laughs> sign for our sides, yeah. and we have to sign to give them back, and they're a very precious commodity. Because and we don't want the storyline to be Right, so right. Have to, so, you know, I, I'm casual at first. I'm thinking, someone will have some sides. And, you know, by the end, I'm like in a flop sweat screaming. <laughs> this, this is and the reality I'm, of the show. They won't give you a second set. No, I they always won't. have this. You sign for it now. Somewhere in the middle of this season, it became very confidential. And you can't lose. You have to sign your name. I'm like, really? Yeah. I I'm signed like, for it in the beginning. I lose it within five minutes. <laughs> and I come back and I say, here's the situation. <laughs> I won't be able to perform the scene unless you give me, <laughs> unless you give me a second set. I do not know that one. Every yeah, day I'm bad. I don't know what, why you're saying there's a problem because you do have a photographic memory. Yeah, he yeah. does. Oh, yeah? He well, that's so I leave it to the day of. But I need them. I have to look at them. <laughs> Um, the gorgeous Joshua Molina, I do oh, want to turn to you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, have you kept count about how many times your face has ended up covered in blood? Uh, yes. Standing next to me is certainly the most dangerous job. I, I yeah. probably would both like that. And uh, huge kudos to Georgia, our makeup artist. Yeah. 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 I have to say, first of all, you know, if you mess it up, it's like, well, I got to change into another suit, <laughs> and we only have two. Okay. So, uh, a lot, often. And I miss, my, the most recent blood spatter was Stephanie's, who played Holly. I yes. miss her, dear friend of Katie's, yeah. became a dear friend of mine. Um, and it was actually kind of funny, though, because rewrites do happen in every episode. And so her death scene <laughs> began in about five episodes before it was finally shot. At the end of every rewrite session, she would get another reprieve. And I was like, you might be on for seasons. <laughs> but ultimately, yeah. Oh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, we got the spray. Um, I asked the same thing um, of you asked of Katie, which is um, your character has also gone through a big evolution of, um, in the past few seasons. And how do you approach it differently than you did in season one? I approach it the exact same way. <laughs> um, one, I would argue that he hasn't necessarily gone through a huge arc. He's just failed upward. Yes. <laughs> He's the same loser he was on day <laughs> The guy has become the Attorney General of the United States, as he likes to say, uh, without <laughs> any evidence of Drink. having ever won a case. Game. I would yeah. say, please tell me everybody drinks when he says Attorney General. Yeah. I am the Attorney General of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> I am convinced at this point that Sean is just f***ing with me. I'm going to make him say it again. All right, I want to play a game with you all. Um, the game is called Pope or Nope. Huh. And here's the deal. That's brilliant. I, like I will read a quote that is either fabricated by me or actually appeared in the show. Oh, my God. Oh. And you have to tell me whether it actually appeared in the show or not. If I think we should make gladiators show. play it, too, because I bet they'd beat us. <laughs> you can um, have the audience help you out if need be. Okay. Okay. Joshua, I'm starting oh, with you. In order? In order. We're going to go right down the road. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, putting us on the set. I was I'm sure I was going to be able to be quiet. But Please, totally. I need to concentrate. You, need to, you have a photographic memory. Mm. I'm expecting a lot of you. Uh, but in addition, I don't watch the show. Okay, well, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> so... That does up the difficulty, though. Yeah, just a little. It might be at a disadvantage. Oh. Anyone else want to admit they don't watch the show at this point? Can we do a Game of Thrones thing? Yeah, totally. Um, all right, first, first one. You think you know what's going on. You think you're in this inner circle, but you're as clueless as Gabby over there. Mm. Nope. <clears throat> Correct? Yeah. Whoa. We are one oh. for one. She knows Abby's name. Right, come on. Um, Oh, still on No, yeah, okay. we're moving on. <laughs> um, don't open it. For them it's Pandora's box. You open that, bad things fly out, the sun goes down. Pope. 
Yes. Oh no. You, you should have to leave. Yeah, you're going to have to, yeah, have to walk off the stage. Are these all <laughs> Olivia Pope quotes? No. Or, oh, no, they're, they're, they're okay, all, so, all sorts of people. Oh. All sorts of people. What? Hold on. Not yes. clear. Oh. So if it's been said, it, you say Pope. Exactly. Wait, yeah. wait. If it's said it, you said Pope. Cool. I just... If it's been on the show. If it's been right. on the okay. show, you say Pope. All right. Ready. I'm ready. You got this. He's refused to do any fundraising, even though I specifically told you that the tragic death of his son would bring in millions of grief dollars. Pope. Yes. You guys are yeah. good. Yeah. Portia. Who's going down? down? Oh, Portia to Cyrus. Exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. All right. First Ready? Scene. What do you got? Let's hear it. I would have missed that. All of this B613 talk, all of this strategizing, it's exhausting. Who named this agency anyway? It sounds like something that's called out at a bingo hall. No. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. You guys are good. <laughs> that question knocked his socks off. Nope. Game. I'm going to destroy you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, the game. Okay. Ready? No, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's a special place in hell for you, right next to Middle East dictators, fascists, and hopefully Sally Langston. Don't, don't help her. You know this. Huh? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I remember a special place in hell in our scene. Mm -hmm. That's different. Three yeah. seconds. <laughs> Can I get a lifeline? Yeah. Uh, ask these guys. Ask these guys. What do you think? No, I'm going to say no. You guys are good. Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I would have said no. <clears throat> I knew it was no. You knew it was no. Don't <laughs> screw it up. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Charge her and lock her up. As for my father, hunt him, find him, and kill him. Pope. Sure. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You ready, Bella? <laughs> oh, my. Like, nobody you. Tell him. <laughs> Tell him. Wow. I didn't realize the quiz master was going to get roasted, too. <laughs> you ready, Bellamy? I don't know. Okay. So you lost somebody? You think that makes you special? Look around this room. Who hasn't? I should have bought stock in Kleenex. I don't know. What do you guys think? No. 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 Correct. Cool. They're clever, though, because they okay. use parts it's of like, things yeah. that actually yeah. were in the show. Half the real line <laughs> and half the... <laughs> yeah. Have these. Thanks, guys. I don't think we paid Kleenex. So. Um, okay. <laughs> we would have had, had to pay Kleenex. Kleenex isn't one of our sponsors. <laughs> yeah, we could never get that. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Unlike Mercedes. Jeff, if, you <laughs> Jeff, if it had been Mercedes, it would have been harder. Story. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, if you don't get this, I'm going to be very disappointed, I have to say, not to put you on the spot. Nope. Oh, good. Oh. Oh. I love disappointing people. <laughs> you are now the most famous gay hooker in gay hooker history. You could write a book, sell it to Hollywood, play yourself in the porn version of Inside Cyrus Bean. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In an episode I directed, I think. There you go. All right, Darby, you ready? Darby. 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 We're, we're getting down to the end here. Oh, man. I am not my father, but I will kill my father if that's what it takes. Oh. A version of that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Oh, well. I'm going to go with Carrie Washington and say nope. <laughs> nope. That's it's correct. Give it the answer. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. No pressure. Oh, Darby got help with Carrie. Oh, Darby. Oh, Darby. Oh, Darby. Oh, Darby. Oh, Darby. Oh, Darby. Oh, Portia. You think you can control things? You control nothing. My father is Zeus and you're a pathetic Icarus who flew too close to the sun. Enjoy your fall. No. Nope is correct. Yeah. Oh my God. That's the best we'll ever do. <laughs> that was the musical chair. Exactly. <laughs> Push on one. Um, uh, Portia, I want to continue with you, though. Um, first of all, how is your back? What? what? Oh, uh, the scars have healed. The, the scars have healed? <laughs> every, time I, every time I watch the show, I'm just like worried for you. I'm like, tell me about being in makeup that day. Like, that was oh. intense. It was intense because, as written, it said that they were, it was a wound inflicted by a cheese grater, which I thought was really creative. Um, <laughs> even for Huck. Uh, but I thought, you know, there'd be a couple of little marks on my, you know, neck, <laughs> sure. shoulder area. And then I went in to get fitted for the prosthetic, and I was like, holy sh**. <laughs> in my mind as a character, I thought there was a lot of, like, you know, a lot of talking about what was going to happen and not actually torture to that extent. So it kind of changed things from that moment for me. I, I mean, it changed them as a, definitely as a character. 
um, she, you know, was deeply affected by that. Of after, of course. Um, um, yeah. How was it for you as an actress coming in um, this season to such a close knit cast, and what was that like for you? Well, you know, as a fan of the show, I was just thrilled to be a part of it in any capacity, and I. <clears throat> I think I'm about to give myself airs. I was about to say I was very respectful about it. <laughs> like, thank you. Um, no, but I, I did. I, I respected the show as it was and and is. And I just wanted to, if I could help tell a story, that was all I wanted to do. And you know, I've I've been you know very blessed in my career to be a part of really great casts that are really tight and close. This is the best cast I have ever oh, seen. Round of applause it's the best for that. cast I've ever been a part of. And she was on Arrested Development. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, they were funnier than me. <laughs> 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 no, no these, right. these guys are incredible and uh, such yeah. generous, lovely people and just so talented. I just, I. I've learned so much this past season working with these guys and watching them, and I just, it's just a blessing for me. Don't we want to stick around for next season? Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> Thanks. I would yeah. love it. <laughs> Hi, Bellamy. Hi, Funkin. How are you? <laughs> I'm so good. I'm enjoying your shoelaces. Oh, thank you Frankly. so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I no, sort of matched. There's a red theme going on down there. I no, sort of match. No, we like, were on the phone earlier. It was, exactly. it was, it was great. Uh -huh. um, you're one of two people in the world that can get away with calling me pumpkin. <laughs> Who's the other one? Uh, a friend of mine. Hey. That was a long story. No, we. Okay. <laughs> that's nothing like showing, story, nothing like showing story, pictures yeah. of my dog. That's not what they're here for. <laughs> um, I want to talk about your season because you've had a big, harrowing season. You played <laughs> drunk Melly. You played smelly Melly. You played Played screw everything to hell, Mel. Like, yeah. Did you play? You played eat everything that's not nailed down, Melly. <laughs> and now you're playing Senate, Melly. Did Woo! I forget anyone? Ow! Oh. It's an unbelievable gift. I mean, you know, you're lucky enough to get a job. You're a forty-something-year-old woman, and you're happy to be employed. But then to show up every week and not know what you're gonna do. <sighs> It's just the best playground in the world. And then to do it with these guys, like, mm -hmm. it's the best. But really, I, I the Smelly Melly was... Smelly Melly was your favorite? Medical. I loved her so much. And eat everything tied down. But they were really, like, they were sort two of sides the of the same Oreo. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and you, had talked about, um, you had talked about, actually, the, uh, tell us about the food that you were eating at Smelly Melly. Oh, well, you know, whatever they bring me. But uh, <laughs> I'm vegan, and our, our props guys and our food stylist, April, they're, they're all amazing, so right? thoughtful. They're so that thoughtful. That vegan for fried chicken. Vegan they fried made chicken, me doomies, right. which isn't far from here, and made me beautiful, beautiful vegan fried chicken. Like, I took home everything even that I had a <laughs> out of. It was just so good. I couldn't throw it away. But, like, you know, there's a lot of uh, sweet potato chips and just peanut butter off a spoon. You know you do that. You know you do that when you're... <laughs> That I, or maybe I, I did research, whatever. Um, yeah, but it was a joy to keep the work and be comfortable. I was going to say in a, bath, like in a bathrobe. Stuff. Yeah, be, that's the best job Please. ever. Yeah, yeah. How much of Melly's journey um, from sort of the grieving mother to the um, Senate candidate did you know at the start of the season? Or has it been sort of a ride for you as well? No, none. We don't know anything. I mean, we don't know anything. I, I think they honestly live a very... Uh, they sort of live moment to moment and let things evolve. I'm sure Shauna has goal goalposts, but she sort of watches us live it and reacts to it. And and it's a living, breathing organism the way our show uh, develops. So I, when they gave us that first script, I was a little um, unsure about tonally, like what they were going for for Smelly Melly, and um, so Shauna was really helpful with that, and Lynn Paolo was absolutely vital because the look of it was uh, so specific. Um, but I could never, Henry, I could never think that I'd, then I'd wind up running for Senate. I mean, and that, that somehow they'd make it make sense. Exactly. That, and it's not hyperbolic within a season that it would go from like, you know, it's the greatest job. <laughs> you have the greatest jobs. Um, 
the fans obviously are a huge, huge part of the show and almost like a, char like a character themselves. And um, all of these, I urge you all to follow these guys on Twitter because they are tweeting like crazy during the okay. show if you don't already. Like, they're super amusing and super fun. And so, Bellamy, Bellamy, I ask you, like, what's the best feedback that you've received on Twitter? What was the most reaffirming thing? Oh, my gosh. You know, I don't know. For me, it's... Um a, the fact of it, that you can sit, it's, it's you know, I'm a Luddite, so this is the 21st century and you can talk to Mozambique while your show's on TV, just like blows my very tiny mind. But uh, for me, I like that they give us their art, you know, like we work and we make a thing and we give it and then it's nice enough that you like it, but then like you give us like pictures or videos or songs or poems or, I, it literally like it makes me all like weepy, the the reciprocity, it's is so... I, I feel like we're so lucky that way, mm -hmm. and 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 you guys are so generous that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's that's I think what's coolest for me. I kind of want to read Scandal Haiku. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever get any, please forward it along. Please retweet it. That would be amazing. Five seven five. Yeah, five seven five. <laughs> we work on that. Well, we're oh, great. That's great. Um, can we say a happy belated birthday to Darby Stanchfield? Yeah. 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 It's also no longer my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we acknowledge that? Yeah, yeah. When was your birthday? January 17th. January 17th. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Hey, I do have a thing on Twitter, though, where <laughs> inadvertently through Kerry. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> You're very kind. Right back at you. Kerry, I don't know how somehow inadvertently wished me happy birthday months <laughs> off my birthday, <laughs> and then Twitter being the fabulous beast that it is, I started getting tons of stuff. And so since then, almost every day, I claim that it's my birthday, and there's some hundred people that <laughs> genuinely wish me happy birthday. So you and Darby are birthday twins, is what you're saying? That is correct, sure. exactly. as I am yes. with every other With everyone on every on stage. Um, Darby, I think you've had, um, I think Abby's had one of the most interesting journeys this season, because mm -hmm. sometimes this show is sort of two shows in one. You have the Olivia Pope Associates cast, you have the White House cast, and I imagine, did, and I'm probably putting words in your mouth, but did it feel like you had a new job at the beginning of the season, as your character did, because all of a sudden you're, with, you're acting with different people? I did. Um, the, the very end of season three, um, Abby goes into the White House as Olivia Pope's proxy in a long white coat, and she's called Gabby, and she doesn't know what she's doing. This is before press secretary. But that particular episode, I did feel like I was guest starring on a totally new show. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was on Scandal because I was working with Jeff Perry and Bellamy Young and Tony Goldwyn and, you know, this whole new set, and I was doing a walk and talk down a hallway that was not uh, Pope and Associates. Um, and it does feel like the season... Abby was reinvented in many ways, and it's just been delightful. I, it was really fun to work with the sort of other half of, of um, the show and the actors. And I've just had a blast. Um, I think one of the most memorable scenes of the entire season was when Abby confronted her abusive ex-husband, um, mm. Charles, in the parking garage. Mm. Um, let's have a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know I was trembling. What was that like for you as an actor? Uh, I was surprised at um, how much, how physically hot I got doing my scenes with him. Um, uh, I don't know, I think just the, you know, it's kind of hard to explain, but the anger and the, just the emotions that came up <laughs> made me, <laughs> just made me really warm. I think that was the thing that surprised me the most. Because I was soaking under, I had this wool coat on and I was, I'm not a big sweater. And um, the except wardrobe people tea, commented tea, right? on it. They were like, your clothes are soaking wet. And just the anger. Did you that work out? It. Yeah, during that. <laughs> yeah, that was, anyway. Um, can we all talk about sex for a second? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, but only for oh. a second. Only for a second. Um, I remember seeing the season when Abby is in her socks and Leo, your love interest on the show, is in a mouth guard. And I'm kind of like, you know what? That's about right. Um, yeah. And what was, did, did, did that ring true for anyone else? Ooh. No? Yeah, maybe. I loved, yeah. I loved it. And I also loved Paul Adelstein, who plays Leo, with the callus clinics oh before God, the bed. And like, the yeah. It's just so human and real. You guys did such a beautiful job with all that stuff. That was very... That's what I like about the writing is, um, you know, there wasn't a lot said about where Abby and Leo were. You just see mouth guard and you see lotion and socks and you get it. Yeah, completely. You no, know, it's just inferred. It's just, oh, that's where they're at in their relationship. Um, speaking of, speaking mm -hmm. of sex, can, am I the only one, um, perhaps in the room, who uh, had to... 
Google Eiffel Tower, not in Paris, when that happened. <laughs> I had to Google no, it, too. Yeah. Yeah, I was I scared to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I also had to Google all the names in the Lena Dunham. Dustbuster. Oh, Dustbuster, Dust Buster, yeah. And, like, sit and spin. I mean, I guess we can kind of get that one, but, like... <laughs> 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 I thought I really thought um, I was I meant to go back over the search results on the, the searches for that day. I imagine like Eiffel Tower, not in Paris, was like right at the top. Right at the top. I know I was. Oh yeah. my god. Um, Jeff, hi. Hi, man. How are you? Good. Um, I think of everyone of the show, um, I'd say you and probably Joe Morton's character are the most loquacious, your character is the most loquacious, and I'm wondering how do you memorize a Shonda Rhimes monologue? Like how long does that take, and how, what's the process? Uh, a, she's a beautiful writer and a writer of real musicality, right? You, I don't know, I don't know anything about, uh, I, I know very little about Southern church voices, but I get Southern preacher a lot of time in her rhythms, and and there's there. Is uh, just beautiful music that helps you along. You just sort of know, and she captures all of our voices really distinctly. So you just sort of know when you're wrong, which is very helpful mm -hmm. for memorization. Mm -hmm. But like all of us, editors have saved our butts mm -hmm. a number of times because. <laughs> Sometimes it's a brilliant idea, and it's at 11 at night, and God bless her, Shonda is staying after it, and it's the fourth color of page on the very same speech, <laughs> and she's changed it. Ripped it up, changed it, and we're learning it for, you know, 7 a.m. And my, I'm not that fast at that. So I remember, I remember a long walk and talk with Bell and me where I said, I hate this, you guys, but you're going to have to get it in three chunks. I can't. I don't think I can, you know. And they just said, no, no problem. That's what these amazing editors are for. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. how you do the, with the letters. Oh, yeah. Little, oh, yeah. My daughter uh, was told about a little um, tool, and she said it was Allison Janney from her David Kelly life mm -hmm. on West Wing. Mm -hmm. Because David, Aaron Sorkin, Shonda, among the writers, they can churn out 500 pages and then 300 new ones the next morning. Mm -hmm. and, and ask you to learn them, right? And, and um, you, you write the first, uh, David Rosen, I've had enough of it. You write the first letter of that sentence, you know, D R I H, whatever. And you put it, in, you can put it in the margin, and you're looking at the full sentence, and you're looking at the code of first letter and punctuation, say. And supposedly it shortens the, you know, brain learning time. That is very um, cool. When you can, when you can, okay, I don't need to look at that <laughs> sentence. Wait, I can do it off the code. Now I can do it with none of it. I wish you'd told me this months ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. isn't it crazy though? The crazy. But you know, I don't know. We, we care. We've talked about this. I, I, I find myself in a rotating deck of cards of any strategy that will work <laughs> in my terror. <laughs> you know, of talking into the voice recorder right on the mm -hmm. phone, of listening in the car through the little Prius screen. <laughs> you know, of uh, Linda, please help me. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. da, da, da. Jeffy's um, wife is Linda Lowy that casts all of Shondaland stuff, who is amazing. Actors, you want to, you want to try to marry a good casting director. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we saw um, a lot of Cyrus's backstory this year, and what was sadder for you, um, the fact that Cyrus as a gay man stayed married to a woman for so long, or that they had the same tacky floral wallpaper the whole time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, are, those are commensurate, you know, <laughs> commensurately pathetic. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. That was that little line broke my heart. Kara read it was to you across the table and going. I've forty years, thirty years, or whatever it was. I slept. I pretended that I uh, was making love to a woman. Or, or I don't. What was it? Something like I made love to women. And I, something I've never understood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and with one little line. You know, Shauna throws this big backstory at us. Um, yeah, it's real, and so I kind of love it, and mm. and it and it makes 
it makes you it makes you sad. One of one of our journalists said, <laughs> "Bless you, uh, um, yeah. Jeff." What did you think of the Bruce Jenner interview? What did, what did you know? Kind of apropos of this terror, yeah, of hiding and, and not hiding. Mm. And I said, "Oh my God, e, you pray for that with yourself, anybody you love, you know, like all of humanity." Uh, get closer to who you are. Don't ever have to hide. You know, figure out how to be proud of who you are. And it takes us That's all a long great. time. Right? That's a great message. And you look at you know you look at all of you as actors and characters on the show, and you have all sorts of backstories and something. And it's something I think the show represents. Uh, even though it's a very heightened political drama, at the end of the day, it's a uh, just a human show, and I think it's something that we all relate to. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Scott. Hey, Pumpkin. How are you? How are you doing, Pumpkin, too? No, it's three. Uh, so we thought we were, uh, so we, you know, there was, a, there was a big, big, big death on a certain other Shonda Rhimes show, and we thought we were losing you, too, but you seemed to make it through okay? I seemed to make it through okay. Oh. You seemed to make it through okay. Mm. I'm what? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you made it through okay. You're, you're sitting here, so. I am that's indeed. Thing. Yeah. Um, so you're tied to a table, you're thrown in a ditch. Like, how do you pass the time as an actor? <laughs> it was really hard. That episode was really hard, but you sort of lay on a table the whole time covered in blood. You can't move. I had a big prosthetic piece that took a couple hours to put on. Um, <clears throat> and of course, it was, uh, I was around for the most part. Uh, it was Josh and Guillermo and Katie and Carrie and uh, the gentleman who plays Russell and the guy who was the doctor. So there were all these people sort of hanging out and having fun in between takes, and I can't get up. <laughs> I feel like we kind of ignored you. You totally ignored me. I didn't. Katie, 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 Katie didn't has ignore a great me. story. Katie, so I had, I had my shirt off on this <laughs> thing, and I was there for, for like 17 hours, and they, they, I had to be back at 7 a.m. the next day, and they called a, a double in, a guy who looks like me, to sort of lay on the table for sure. one scene. No, all day Scott was laying there with his stomach on, and so, you know, he and I are super tight. He's like a brother to me, and I'm all day, I'm like, doing this to his stomach, and I'm giving him purple nerpes. He did a lot of nipples. <laughs> you know, things like that, and I'm because he can't get up and he can't move, and it's super fun to make fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> So. Not all of us are professionals. <laughs> okay, you have no place to speak, <laughs> Mister. And what happened? So, so, so they I had trade to go him home. out. They ha he has to go home, and I go. It's like two o'clock in the morning, and I go up to. A someone and I'm That's squeezing funny. his nipple <laughs> and it's the guy who's standing in oh for him exactly <laughs> like Scott but it's not Scott <laughs> and you hadn't met him I had never met him <laughs> and he just looks up at me like oh hey like nice to meet you and I'm oh my god oh my god I feel like I can get in really big trouble for this no, um, he said I love you in Big Hero 6 yeah he said I yeah. love your work yeah. Big Hero 6 and I said oh thank you so much that really means that's so nice of you to say I was mortified. I had just like done that with his nipples, so and I had um, I was so sore for a couple days after you did that to me. I don't believe Marika you. was Marika couldn't believe she's like, what's wrong with your nipples? I don't and I believe like, one <laughs> Um, in related news, Katie is no longer on the show because HR has escorted her. <laughs> I'm so sorry to that gentleman if he's watching this. What do you mean? He, he, he like IMDB'd you without even meeting you. He knew you were in Big Hero 6. Don't apologize to that oh, well. <laughs> Weird stalker guy. Are you jealous? Huh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, where are we even going with this? We're just going to stop. <laughs> Um, so, okay. Scott, are you like, so you're on a table. Are you going through your grocery list? Are you thinking, I've got to go pick up the kids here? Like, what's going on? No, my, yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. My back was hurting so much because, you know, it's <laughs> like a flat. One, one of them was a, a, a wooden table, mm. and one of them was a, a, this gurney that they, you know, put you an ambulance in. So it's very narrow, and I'm, I'm, I got a tube in my mouth. And, and all I'm thinking, aside from, like, you know, please, someone let me get up, is um, I'm so happy they're paying us. <laughs> 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 it's just not all as glamorous as it looks, as it looks on TV. Hmm? It's not all as glamorous as it looks on TV. It unfortunately is not, but it's pretty damn good, I'll tell you that. <laughs> We're very fortunate. What was the most OMG moment for you this season? Well, look, I, I think, uh, oh gosh, I'm going to go with them. But, but I loved, uh, personally, 
getting the first script and seeing yeah. Jake and Olivia on an island, yeah. and I was like, yes! <laughs> yeah. I was. And so then cute finding out that we were going to an island. And then finding out that it. we were actually going to the Bahamas to shoot. <laughs> So where did, uh, where did you all shoot that? We flew to Paradise Island, and they, they um, um, took us on this great little boat. I say little so no one gets jealous. Uh, <laughs> it was not little. To this, <laughs> it was rickety, though. It was big and rickety. Sure. <laughs> to this <laughs> itsy-bitsy island with a couple of houses on it about an hour and a half uh, off the coast of Paradise Island in the Bahamas. Right. There was of nowhere. nothing there. Gorgeous. I mean, it, I, I can't even describe. My wife is still mad at me that I got to go and she didn't. It was unbelievable. And just to be clear, they paid you for this. They <laughs> and did. And they paid us. Yeah. They, they paid you did. For and um, there was this really fun thing that the network rub it in, had. Rub it, rub it well, no, no, the in. network had done this thing of where, where in the world is Olivia Pope? And we were actually on a plane flying back. What kind of plane? A private plane. Oh. <laughs> and, but the reason, the reason we had to fly private was because every time the network thought about us being on a plane to the Bahamas, people would know what happened. Yeah, we, the had, we had to fly private. We had private to fly guy. private. <laughs> and, um, but all over the country, these banners were flying on beaches. I think, it, was it Labor Day? And, and they were saying, where in the world is Olivia Pope? And I happened to have a white sweater on on the plane, and we took a picture with our iPhones of my arm on his shoulder on a private plane with the hashtag where is Olivia Pope and people and I wrote, went I wrote she's with no. me yeah. <laughs> and people went Ballistic. nuts it was so fun <laughs> and yes. you literally broke the internet ah, we broke the internet <laughs> it was great I see Darby on the end just like seething with jealousy <laughs> <laughs> understandably by the way um, I think we have some questions from the audience oh yeah. Yeah. very very excited oh. great but you have them I have them right here. Oh. My old hand, in my own hand. Oh. All right. They didn't trust the audience to ask him to I Well, you have to stand up so we can see you when he says your question. Exactly. All right. <laughs> first one's, <laughs> Carrie, the first one's for you, and you're being addressed as Ms. Pope. Ooh. Ooh. Ms. Pope, who is if the better kisser, you. Jake or the oh. president? Oh. And this is from, and this is from Marco. I've Marco? It's good. They're both technically proficient. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And I will say this, actually, this is so, I actually had to say this earlier, this is a little bit weird, but Olivia kisses these two men very differently. Like, they are very different kissers, and they're like, the relationships are so different that they're, they are completely different kinds of moments. It's really weird, but <laughs> what are jobs? <laughs> oh, there's a little side conversation going on that I want yeah, to bring to the is. public over here. Um, the, uh, between Quinn, uh, between oh, Quinn and I Huck's character. So I asked Kate, so who's a better kisser, Guillermo or um, um, the guy who plays Charlie? Well, George. George. I wish George, George Newbern. Charlie, amazing love. Um, I, you answered the question so perfectly. I wish I had had this answer earlier today. Because uh, I had been asked this before, but I, I I think Quinn also has very different relationships with the two of them, and she kisses them differently as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. It's so Our weird, jobs are but very it's true. Weird. Our jobs are differently. Weird. Anyone Trump else want to vouch to kissing <laughs> people differently? Like a as a start. Yeah. Not being such a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. See? Can, it's the only way I can process it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this question, but it's anonymous, unfortunately. Oh, um, we'll do, you, do you hang out together outside of work? God, no. So where? <laughs> <laughs> so where? <laughs> Is that you? We there do, you go. Hello. Nice job. Good, Good question. question. We do. And yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Often. And uh, a lot of times at, at my house. Yeah. Um, and. <laughs> The group is ridiculous, <laughs> actually, because days are really long. And when we get together, the particular brand of cacoph cacophony is so funny because, it, I, I, I don't know, 11-year-olds at a Girl Scout sleepover? <laughs> That's what we're like. You know, is, what I, is what I think of. And it seems like a 50-year <laughs> reunion, you know? Uh, um, uh, when we've just spent 17 hours together. And there's supposed to be like so two hours sweet. and they end up being 10. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. long. Yeah. 
And the, I, I will say also, don't be jealous, but the Scandal Girls have our own mm -hmm. gatherings we that do. are really special. Yeah. yeah. We were okay. trying to put together a Scandal Boy one, but, but Josh Molina Josh didn't do it. Josh, and then he got mad when we were going to do it without him. I got a very Yeah, and he said, you're going to do it without me. Great, really? It was actually his birthday. There are a lot of Jewish holidays. It was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually your birthday, right? And it was my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His birthday is a Jewish holiday. It's <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. Um, this one's anonymous, too, and I, I love it. Um, who comes up with the names of what you call the different ways to dispose bodies? Oh. Mm. Who asked yeah. that? That's a great one. Who did that? Who did that? Oh, oh, there she is. Oh, don't be afraid. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a question. Yeah. That's, I don't, that's a Scandal Writers, a writers question. Yeah. I don't know. No. That's really, you should post it to Scandal Writers. Yeah. At scandal Writers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fluff and Fold is good stuff. It was mm. really bizarre to do. It was. <laughs> but fun. Yeah, but fun. <laughs> <laughs> Guillermo, kick that leg out, because I think he's got on uh, Katie's rap gift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Let me oh, see. yeah. Let me Katie see. gave me these socks. They have a drill on them, and yeah, they, they say, perfectly oh. screwy. They're awesome. <laughs> ah, I Cute. love them. Thanks. They're I guess amazing. Scott didn't get a pair. Oh, good, Josh. By the way, I take it back. These guys are funnier than the cast of Someone the other day said, if they ever cancel Scandal, I'm just, well, I'll still have Josh Molina's Twitter feed. <laughs> I told Josh that. He said, they canceled this show, I'm never tweeting again. <laughs> oh. um, I've got a question from Leah S. Oh. Leah. Yeah, Leah. Hi, Leah. Leah. Yeah. Hey. Go, Leah. Go, yeah. Leah. Yeah. Um, what about the script pulled you in? As in, what made you think, I need to be a part of this? Oh, I was like last. I mean, I, they didn't add me as a regular until second season. So I was, I just had a couple lines in the pilot and got hired the day before by his sweet wife. And for me, Tony had directed me on Dirty Sexy Money and I knew what a sweet pea he was. And I was trying to think about like, who could like what, who could be his wife? And that's uh, mm. I knew Shauna was amazing because I would worked for her, and I knew Carrie was amazing. And I just thought I, I'll show up and say five syllables, much less five lines. So just happy to be invited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah that's great. Um, Tony, how about you? What um, what pulled you in? The combination of Shonda Rhimes and Carrie Washington. I'd worked with Shonda as a director. I directed at Early Grey's Anatomy, and, and so at. Um, I'd been, every time I saw Carrie in a movie, she was so different in everything, and I was a huge fan mm -hmm. of her work and loved her as a person and had been just going, God, I hope I get a chance to work with Carrie. Mm. And then um, Shonda called me and said, how did you play the president of the United States? Yeah. Now there's the real reason. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone knows. <laughs> so the, 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 the combination of those two women, I was like, that's going to be... Um, speaking Magic. of being the president, do you and like Kevin Spacey and Mark <laughs> Sheen and some of the other great presidents of our time all get together and like compare notes? That's a great like uh, card game. Oh I, my god! I just saw Kevin the other night. <laughs> it really was like, hello, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. President. Be a good funnier so dive. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cheesy. It's pretty so, so good. Yeah. But I have the same experience with Obama, so, you know. <laughs> Not cheesy. Not cheesy. Not cheesy. Not cheesy at all. Not cheesy. Um, this, um, this question does not have an author, so please identify yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, after four seasons, are you still surprised when you read new scripts? Yes. Oh, there we go, right you. there. Yes. Yeah. Nice. We are. Every time. Blown away. We really away. are. Every time. This finale episode, I mean, finale. I just, <laughs> I turned to Sean, I was like, where do we go from here? Are you for real? Like, how do we, what, do, well, now what? <laughs> It's crazy. I'm surprised, um, maybe because you all just filmed the finale, I'm kind of surprised that nobody has brought up um, who Olivia's rescuer was after. Um, oh, that was that a huge OMG. That was a huge OMG oh, right. moment. And so emotional hmm. for us. Talk, to, talk a little about that. Um, just yeah, that having was... him come back, having Ian come back was so special. And... Um, and such a shock that he that he was my hero was was so great um, and so beautiful. It just felt really 
full circle. Um, and genius that Abby brought him. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It just it was it's such a beautiful writing, and it it was fun. I remember when that episode aired, somebody on Twitter saying like, "Who's that guy?" And it became the line of real gladiators and completely <laughs> gladiators. It was like, "Who's that guy? Where you been?" It was great. It was great. What, at what point did you find out that um, he was going to be your savior? At the table read. At the table, at the table read. read. And, and when we all saw his it name. It erupted. It erupted. And, and I like ran crazy. up to Shonda after and I went, for real? Like, how? how did you, do you, have you spoken to him? Have you seen uh -huh. him? Is it true? Like, how are we going to do it? And when we shot the roof scene, he and I had this very elaborate, we were in two different cars with tinted windows and we went up through this garage, like, because there were paparazzi, they had seen signs for the show. And we had to make sure that nobody saw him on our way up to the roof. So it all just felt so wonderfully exciting. And we, you know, we protect our secrets. We sign those sides because we know half of the joy comes from the, the realization of the aha moments, the, the shock and awe. So, it, you know, we just, we work so hard to keep those secrets. Nice. Last audience question is from Valerie Moses. Valerie. Valerie. Good name. Great to be Valerie. Yeah. 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 Good name. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, carry, I carry this one is for you. Olivia's monologues often have similarities to Papa Pope's long, intense monologues. Do hmm. you think that's done intentionally to always remind us that they are father and daughter, even though Olivia is always trying to distance herself from him? Wow. Yeah, so you know, Bellamy sort of referenced this earlier. There's this really cool thing that I'd, I'd never experienced before because I haven't done this much television mm -hmm. where they write these things for us and then we take them and metabolize them and try to do them justice and then they watch our performances and it feeds more ideas so it's this real reciprocity of, of inspiring each other our performances inspire their writing their writing inspires our performances and um, Joe Morton did this really cool thing that I noticed very early on he knew that he was playing my dad before I knew he was playing my dad. He knew very, he knew in that season, he had all his scenes with you. And I kept saying, what am I going to have a scene with him? And he was like, I don't know. But he knew that he was my dad. Um, and he had made this decision to do this very specific physical quirk that I do as Olivia. And he built it into his performance so that it could be something that Olivia got from her dad. Um, which, in a way, I was like, how dare you? I came up with that on my own. And it, and it was so perfect for our relationship. Like, that was mine, and you made it yours. Um, and we've been doing that all along the way. It? Kind of, I it? can't yeah. tell you. Oh, oh, oh. I know. Because it'll make me self yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. say, no, but, um, no. but And we do that a lot with each other. There, are, I steal things from him and how I say the rhythm of things. And we've, we've had a big impact on each other's performances. And I think the writers feed that, for mm. sure. Valerie, such a good question. Thank you for having that. That's a very good question. Um, and this one's, this one's for the group. What new quality did you discover about your character in season four? That she existed. <laughs> 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 when, Abby, when Abby's not in the bubble, she's much less sassy. Mm. Uh, yeah. Really, she was much more toned down and polite when she was trying to get in the White House bubble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jeff, you discovered the other. Uh, Shonda said Cyrus in this big, ooh, I don't know, uh, Lundra, Lundermat <laughs> of, of change ever since he knows he was responsible for James's death. And uh, so there's, uh, I think it's his confusion. Some, some sort of deep confusion that's a little different this year than before. Um, I would say that, that there's a continuum and Melly is happier the more of herself she's allowed to bring into her life. Like the more she's hiding, the more angry and miserable and like taking it out on people she is. And the more she is allowing herself or she is allowed to like bring all of her power to the forefront, then she's free as a bird and happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you? Uh, the fits really truly deeply believes in Melly mm -hmm. and her potential as a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, that Olivia really understands that no one can save you but yourself. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. That was good. Mm. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit on that one for a while. Um, that uh, that you know, since the since the island, Jake is substantially more trusting. Mm. Although he doesn't trust anybody, but more trusting, not just with Olivia, but I think in general. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> It was a good island. It was a good, um, good island. I, yes, I think he does. I think we learned this season um, the length to which she will go for Olivia and Huck, which is even more so than I thought. How about you, Gary? Huh? Um, probably that he's a lot more vulnerable Aww. and like a, a, a big softy for, for his family. For his family, well, for his family, sure. And his kid and his mm -hmm. right, his kid and his wife. You? I, while I would still argue that among this questionable group, David is the closest to being morally upright, he is <laughs> he is more willing to play fast and loose with the law than than I would have anticipated. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He wears what does the David white do? hat. <laughs> yeah, what is He's the attorney general. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Drink! Yeah, tell them what Johnny Todd, John Todd gave you for your rap gift. Oh, I wish I'd brought it with me. I tweeted a picture. Uh, Johnny Todd, who stands in for me and is a great guy, got me a yarmulke. <laughs> and it's really white, sewn white. into it is the, the a logo, and it says Attorney General of the United States. So now <laughs> I wear the white yarmulke. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, right, I think, we have, to, I think so we have to wrap sweet. it up and we have time for one final question. You guys have all teased this incredible, incredible finale. I know that I'm not allowed to ask about spoilers per se. We want everyone to be surprised. But um, I'm going to go down the line. I want you to describe the finale in uh, between one and three words. I'll give you one and three words. <laughs> I... Redonk. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Just the one word. <laughs> Titillating. Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, cataclysmic. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, relentless. Uh, whipsaw. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice word. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> after that. I know. I'm still thinking. He knows I have nothing. I know. Um, I just did that for you. The whole I got nothing. Uh, yeah. Can I give you some I'm time? Sorry. Uh, God, the Bronx girl in me just wants to say dope. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. I still got nothing. <laughs> um, uh, fantastically open-ended. Oh, oh, oh. 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 I got nothing. I got nothing. I feel nothing. like it's oh, really like, <laughs> drop the mic. What? Yeah. 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 You should have walked off. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Um, unpredictable. Uh -huh. mm. Nice. And how about the birthday boy? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Cauliflower. <laughs> Give it a couple weeks, you'll see. <laughs> so what you're all telling me is it it's redonc redonculous dope cauliflower. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, like yeah. yeah. we'll go for that. Hashtag. Um, let's give these guys a hand. They're awesome.